Good morning one and all. Today we will see another concept in MySQL called a stored procedure. This is equivalent to your methods which you have learnt in any of the programming languages. So basically a procedure is a collection of pre-compiled SQL statement stored inside a database. It's I can say it is a subroutine or a sub program in your regular computing language. So a procedure always contains name, a parameter list and the SQL statement, those are the executable statement. You can compare it with your methods what you have used earlier. So in SQL, we can invoke the procedures by using the triggers, other procedures and applications such as Java, Python, PHP, etc. So if you compare it with triggers what you learnt earlier, so trigger is a procedure which is executed automatically but the stored procedure has to be called explicitly. Well, so stored procedure increases the performance of the application because once stored the procedures are created, compiled and stored in the database. So hence they reduce the traffic between the application and the database server. That means you need not pass all the statements, rather you just need to pass the procedure's name and parameters. The statements which are the part of its execution are all pre-compiled and stored there. And procedures are reusable and transparent to any application. You write it once and call them any number of times with varying parameters. So procedure is always secure. The database administrator can grant per, uh, permission to the application only to access the store procedure rather than giving permission to the database tables. So what happens an external user who is using it through the application will be uh, availing the database services through the stored procedures with no permission to the tables directly which keeps the table secured. Now let us see how do we create this. As part of your create statement, you have always understood the create statements starts with the keyword create and the database object which you are going to create and then the object name. So here also we have create procedure, procedure name. Like what we discussed yesterday because procedures also can uh, store multiple SQL statements which are terminated with semicolon, we just change the delimiter to some other character before we write uh, start creating the procedures. So here we have changed the delimiter to double slash and create procedure, procedure name. Here the procedures may have parameters that is your arguments or may not. If it is having arguments then the arguments can be of three types in, out and in out. So it is optional. So if you are having the arguments or if you are having the parameter, you must specify which type of parameter it is in, out or in, out. Then give the parameter name and the data type. It can have one or more parameters. So these are all optional here. And between begin and end, you will have your procedure statements which is divided into two parts again declaration section and execution section. As you are all well versed with your programming language, you understand this very easily. Declaration section is for your variable declaration if you have to use them for any temporary storage of information and executable part is your SQL, SQL statements. So you are ending and the delimiter here is double slash and this delimiter semicolon is to get the delimiter back to semicolon. Let us try to see the example now. Okay. This is about that parameter I have already explained you procedure name represents the name of the stored procedure. So you will be calling it with that name parameter represents the number of and list of parameters declaration section is for variable declaration and this is the code for the function. Coming to the types of parameter in is used for input mode that means when you want to pass the arguments to your procedure you will use in out will be used as an output parameter. When you have to return value from your procedures, we will use out variable. And in out, when you have given a combination of in out, it can work both as input as well as output. Initially, 
it will receive the arguments from the calling procedure and then whatever evaluated value is there that will be returned through the output variable or uh, through that particular parameter because it is capable of performing both input and output function. Procedure call, the keyword call, then use the procedure name and if it ha contains any parameters, give them within parenthesis. So, call procedure name is going to be the syntax for calling the procedure that is execution. If you are using functions that is exec, procedure is used with call. Okay. Let us see our first example with uh, without any parameters. Now, I have kept the things very simple for you. So, let us say we wanted to list and count the employees who are earning commission. So, now what happens is because procedures can be written and called any number of times, if you have any common SQL statements which are run multiple times or throughout your uh, session, maybe you have to work with it several times, such statements can be all included into a procedure and you can just run that procedure whenever you want instead of giving the statement. Just look at this. Anytime you just wanted to know who are earning commission. So, because this statement may be a common one, I include it in the procedure and whenever I want, I just call that procedure. This is how it can run. Okay, now, this is without any parameters. So, we have used create procedure commission details, begin, I have the select statements and I am terminating. Now, let me just execute this or call this in my MySQL and show you once. Okay. This is for your reference, I just displayed all the procedures available on the database IT2B. So, show procedure status where DB is IT2B. If you remember, we said the procedures are all pre-compiled and associated with the database in which you are creating this. So, if you want to create some other procedure on some other database, change here, use database, change shift to the new database, create the procedures there. And if you see here, Commission details is a procedure which is there. Let me just call that procedure call commission underscore details. Look at this. The statements there was if you see select star from EMP where commission is not null. I wanted the list of employees who are earning commission and I just want the count. So, here select count of commission. This is count of commission. EMP commissioners okay? and this is the list and this is the commission that they are earning. This is how it has executed. So, without any parameters, so it is simply call commission details. You can have the parenthesis optionally because there are no parameters, it is okay. okay. This is output that you are getting, we have seen it over there. Now, coming to the procedure with in parameter. As we said, in is used for getting the value from the calling procedure where along with the procedure call statement, the argument is passed. So, I am just taking the example where I am going to display the list of employees who are from a specified department. That means, the department number is going to be the input. Based on the department number that you have given, only those employees details will be displayed. So, it is create procedure department underscore employees. The data type or the parameter or the argument that you are passing is DNO, which is of integer type and it is basically an input parameter. So, I will just say select star from EMP where DEPTNO equal to DNO. How am I calling? Call DEPT underscore employees of 20. So, when I am saying this is the output of all the employees of department 20 are going to be displayed here. Let me just run that here again. So, I will say call, uh, what was it? Employee department underscore employees, DPT underscore employees of, let me say of department 10. So, this is what. See, earlier when you said department 20, you had 5 records. Here in department 10, I have only 3 records being displayed. 
this is how. So, parameter can be anything based on the parameter that you have sent, the corresponding department list will be displayed. Okay. Now, let us see in case if at all we want to return some value from our procedure. In such case, I will be using out type of parameter and out can store the result of your evaluation within the procedure and that can be accessed outside the procedure. So, procedure creation is again same create procedure display max sal out I am just using it to find the maximum salary highest salary is my parameter name it is of integer type because salary is there of float type if you want you can even give float there ok and coming to this select max of sal into highest sal from EMP, but remember when you are calling because it is a out parameter you just have to mention at the rate and some variable or some uh, character here. So, when we call the procedure the out parameter tells the database systems that its value goes out from the procedure. Now, we will pass its value to a session variable at the rate m, at the rate x, whatever it is, ok. Take a character there in the call statement. So, look at this call display max underscore sal at the rate x. So, this at the rate x can be accessed using your select statement so that you will get this output, ok. The highest salary is when I say at the rate m or at the rate x, whatever it is we are going to get this display max cell call display underscore max underscore cell at the rate m or x whatever you give ok one row then I will just say select at the rate m. So, this is what is the output returned which was stored in this particular m ok. So, this is about if you want you can use both in and out type. Now, earlier we found the salary maximum salary from the overall employee table. Now, maybe I will send the department number and in that department number I want the highest salary. So, you are using two type of parameter there one is out type one is in type. So, select max of salary into highest salary into this out type of variable from EMP where DEPTNO equal to DNO, DNO is this in type of value. So, I am calling it like this at the rate m comma 10, 10 is the department number. Let me try to find the highest salary of department 20, it is display department max sal. So, call display underscore DPT max underscore sal of at the rate x comma let me find the highest salary of department 20. So, I got the salary it is stored in x. So, I just have to say select at the rate x. So, 63,000 is the highest salary of department 20, 90,000 was of department 10. So, like this in and out separate combination any type of variables any number of parameters can be passed or returned from your methods I mean uh, procedures. Yeah. Now, coming to the combination of in and out in and out as we said is a single uh, data uh, single parameter which can act both as input and output. So, used for both input and output purpose. So, initially the input value is set using at the rate m and then we will access the output value at the same variable at the rate m. So, here if you see get emp salary in out data int. So, as an input I will be sending the employee number and as an output I am getting the salary of the employee. So, it is we want to display the salary earned by a selected employee. So, if you see here select sal into data, data is my parameter name from EMP where EMP NO is equal to data. So, here right side data is acting as the input variable and here left side what you have used as input data is acting as the output variable. 
So, here initially I will set at the rate m equal to 7900 which is my employee number and call this procedure with that value. So, that value is used for calculating or uh, extracting the salary of that particular employee and the value is stored in the out parameter which is accessed using select at the rate m. So, you are going to see this set at the rate m equal to 7900 and you are calling that particular uh, see call get emp underscore sal at the rate m and that is what is the salary earned by that employee 7900. Okay, this is about the three types of parameters as procedures are synonymous to your methods I am sure you will be able to understand this easily. Okay, and will be able to do any kind of application. Just the thing is that all your SQL statement has to be enclosed as a procedure and you need to call them. Advantage is you write it once and call it several times. So, to see the list of all the procedures on a particular database, you can use so show procedure status, you can give a pattern or where condition. So, we are seeing the example show procedure status where db equal to it2b. So, all the elements or all the procedures that was the list which we had earlier, all the procedures that are defined as a part on it2b, look at this, will be listed for you including who is the user who has defined that procedure, when was it modified, when was it created, all these details will be displayed. Similarly, as it is a database object, it can be deleted using the drop database object and the object name. So, MySQL also allows a command to drop the procedure that is nothing but drop procedure. If you want optionally, you can use if exist because sometimes we say drop but the procedure does not exist. So, if exist will be uh, ensuring that the boolean function is true, then only it will try to drop the procedure. So, we can just say drop procedure procedure name. Okay. This is all about our uh, procedures or stored procedures in MySQL. This is a part of your practical. So, see to that you will practice all the uh, various creation and deletion of procedures and execution of the procedures as per your practical portion. Thank you all.